So what's going on toxic gamers today? We're gonna be talking about the retardation levels that are literally off the charts in video games Master Chief recently turned into Mrs. Chief. We had the Concord situation. We had the Dustborn situation not long ago Lara Croft they turned Lara Croft into Larry into Lorenzo Croft <laughs> These seconds are crazy man. We talked about it BBC shut down as well that happened not long ago. Salute to Captain BBC <laughs> Like the video if you think there are two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders. I gotta give everybody equal chances. Listen, I'm not a savage here, okay? But I wanna get into it. There are multiple clips that I wanna share with you guys. We got consultants now coming out and they are saying that they don't like gamers, that gamers are problematic, gamers are menace to society, gamers don't deserve to live, okay? Okay, I'm exaggerating on that part, Bruh. but they, they are literally coming out and saying that they don't like gamers because they're not buying video games that belong in the garbage essentially right so that's what's going on i want to play you that but first of all shout out to hero hey roll it today has been a disastrous day for the modern audience we're talking multiple l's that they've taken today and i'm just looking at all this news thinking where should we even start i guess okay. we can begin here over at that park place they report konami deletes post announcing silent hill 2 remake was designed for modern audiences Yo. at the end of may konami published a post on x that has since been deleted where it announced see how the bloober team devs work uh, for for context apparently this is like a 20 year old game right uh, if i'm not mistaken and they are remaking which fans absolutely want and people are like yeah like damn they're making a new game they're remaking they're remaking a masterpiece oh hell yeah but then they uh, uh, changed the female jawline and the character and a lot of people like yeah that they, they went woke as well and then they were saying that they're making it for modern audiences and now it seems like that they removed that part as well, guys. Keen on Silent Hill 2 preserved yeah. authenticity while adapting a horror classic for modern audiences. And modern just audience, for the record, yeah. yeah, if you've never seen that tweet before, it's right here on screen, and you wouldn't be able to find it on their Twitter anymore either because as reported, they have recently decided to delete that tweet. Over on what? Steam, the Silent Hill 2 remake seems to be debuting to overwhelmingly positive reviews, making it even more interesting that Konami's decided that they don't want this game associated <laughs> with a modern audience <laughs> after all. That takes us to techforgamers.com and a poll that they wrote an article about here that says over 95% of players don't consider inclusivity important in gaming. Story highlights. Let's take a look. A recent poll indicates that over 95% of players don't care about inclusivity in games. Forcing inclusivity in video games has been a known culprit leading to failure. DE&I has become an unfortunate yeah. trend that has gradually been... I, I 5% gotta be like these activists, these devs, right? Like, dang y'all, man. Like, who are the 5%, man? 95%. 95%, that's tough, guys. That is tough. <laughs> <laughs> that is tough, man. Oh, man. That is that is tough, though. But listen, man. People are not against diversity. It's the forced diversity. And with this push of DEI inclusivity, these suckers are excluding everyone, though. They're making echo chambers. It's like rules for thee, but not for me. And these suckers just want to have clones of them uh, literally running around in the video games. They're not about diversity. They're not about inclusivity at all we're seeing what's happening in video games everything is turning to this like master chief mrs chief right now bro mrs chief lara croft okay yeah if these things were all about diversity yes people love this female protagonist game people love this franchise and they recently turned her into lorenzo as well right larry croft lorenzo these things don't like inclusivity bruh and, and yes we all saw what they've done to yasuke as well just cause he black, they made him gay. Just cause he black, they made him gay, bro. Damn, this like is crazy. And this is based off a real person. I gotta say it for the millionth time. If Yasuke was gay in real life, then it would have made sense to make him as he was in the game, right? But he was not, but they still were like, yeah, he black, so let's do that. These suckers are hella racist, man. Towards Asian people, to blacks, to everybody, bro. To everybody. Damn, these suckers crazy, bro. Gaining more pace. Yeah, at the same time, though, there's recently been a lot of setbacks for DEI stuff in gaming. And outside of gaming, there's been similar setbacks going on since around, like, 2023. Also, <laughs> the public at large seems much more aware of the issues with DEI and ESG-related yeah. initiatives and how corporations people often just up. use them as some sort of shield. Basically all like, oh, hey, guys, we really care about these social issues. Don't pay any attention to how greedy and corrupt we actually are. Back at the article, they say inclusivity is an unfortunate trend that has picked up in the industry over the past few years. Yeah. While having characters of different origins isn't anything bad, forcing a narrative is. Most fans share the opinion Facts. as 95% of gamers voted they don't care about inclusivity. And Facts! 110%! And listen, let me tell you this, people are cool with diversity when it's done right. Massive example, like the Assassin's Creed Shadows of the BBC, right? 
Damn, bro, like this game is set in feudal Japan. People want to see a Japanese protagonist. That is diversity. That is diversity. <laughs> but they're like, nah, bro, we gotta force uh, Yasuke in it, right? And of course, just because he's black, we gotta make him, make him gay as well, bro. So they're like, okay, we're gonna be racist towards Asians, and then we can also be racist towards black people, right? Usually, black men are the symbol of masculinity. They are strong men, right? Like, if, yeah, generally speaking, that, that's a compliment, right? That's a compliment. But they, they, they are like, no, bro, we need to strip the black men uh, and men, literally, we need to strip the men. It's like men becoming more feminine, fe females becoming more masculine. We're, we're seeing that happen, bro. Lara Croft turned turned to be uh, Lorenzo right now, bro. Like, what the hell is going on, man? These these suckers are destroying good franchise that uh, good franchises that have been established for years, bro. Established for years, and they're destroying it over all this crap. And the games aren't even that good. Like minus the book uh, bull squash that's going down. Like the, the the game's quality is like really piss poor as well. That goes to show you they don't know how to make games. They just know how to force uh, agendas down people's throat. That that's what they know. That's what they know about gaming Wait for and poll. I gotta Why show it matters. This. Inclusivity has emerged as a proven culprit that ruins an entire game. We have had some clear examples in the last few years, including Concord, SSK the JL, and more, and the backlash from the fans was quite apparent. They then go on to show an image of the poll, and while it's not the biggest sample size, let's see what they say here. Subtext reads, over 95% of gamers vote against inclusivity in a new poll on NeoGAF. Now, inclusivity isn't a bad thing at all. In fact, it's always good to see characters from different origins, genders, and races in a game. But what's offsetting is the forced inclusion narrative that pushes political yeah, agendas yeah, into one. gaming. Oh gosh, Concord jump scare right there. Uh, continuing, they say, for context, SSK the JL introduced Miss Freeze in its last season. The, the character has, excuse me, this freaking way this character is looking at me, dude, with the side eye. Uh, <laughs> the character has a huge history in comics, movies, and TV shows, and has always been Victor Fries or Mr. Freeze. The idea of changing that attracted a lot of criticism. Forced inclusivity was never a problem a few years ago, ever since consultation companies like Sweet Baby Inc. emerged. This unfortunate trend has been forced into the industry, ruining many great games. I mm. think there's definitely been mm. examples of forced mm. inclusivity before SBI became prominent, and it's unwise to put all the blame on the consultation firms. When yeah. these corporations are willingly hiring these consultation firms. Yeah, it's like, at that point, like, if you, yeah, right, like, it's the publisher's fault. And the, this is different kind of stupid. These, like, the, these publishers, these companies are hiring racist people, racist uh, uh, consultants out there that would use black people, LGBT people, Asian people as shields. To them, brown people don't even exist. They're openly being racist towards white people. It's like, bro, what what is going on, right? And these publishers would hire these racist consultancies, and they're like, yeah, come work with us. And these consultancies, these racist people, these racist consultancies don't even like gamers. They, they openly say, we don't like gamers, right? These are activists, racist activists, and, and they hire them, and they pay them to ruin their game, bro. Make that make sense, bro. First, they have to spend money on the writers to come up with a good story or decent story. Uh, good is debatable, right? Right? Yeah, right? They gotta hire writers. They gotta hire programmers, devs, uh, and they're putting together a team. Then they put together a team, right? And they make a game, and then they're like, yeah, okay, like, something in right, you know? Mm, the game is looking kind of good right now. Let's go ahead and ruin it. Let's go ahead and hire these racist consultants. Let's go ahead and hire these racist activists that, first of all, don't like gamers. Secondly, are racist. And third of all, that would ruin our projects. Yeah, we spent five years on working on this game, right? We just need like one extra year. Let, let's just uh, ruin it, right? Let's ruin it and then let's drop it. And, and uh, yeah, and, and then ultimately their studios get shut down. You, you feel what I'm saying? It's like, bruh. This is different kind of stupid. So you're wasting money left and right, and then you piss off your fan base, and then you, you, your game is not selling well, and then sometimes some of these studios then get shut down. Or if not, the, the devs get fired. We've seen how many times we've seen devs getting fired. Devs getting fired left and right, bro. So yeah, it'll be what it'd be. When you put all the blame on the consultation firms, it takes away from the responsibility of the executives, of management, etc, etc, when they really should all be getting criticism for how they're ruining games, at least in my opinion. Continuing, yeah, they absolutely. say, Sweet absolutely. Baby has a bunch of notable names working with it, including Santa Monica, Xbox Game Studios, Rip. Warner Brothers, Ubisoft, Rip. and more. The influence is quite visible in their recent- Oh, uh, with Ubisoft, we know, bro. <laughs> we know, bro. Santa Monica, oh yeah, Xbox Game Studios, big time. Warner Bros., yes. 
hundred percent. That's you usual suspects, bro. PlayStation, Xbox, Warner Bros, Ubisoft. And yeah, that exactly my point, right? Ubisoft is on a brink of getting their company sold out. Oh, oh, and I'm not sure if you guys heard this or not. It was a rumor, but now it's nothing but confirmed because like insiders are now coming out. I believe one of the CEO came out and said that, yeah, we're apparently looking to sell, looking to buy. So yeah, these things are never gonna learn. Ubisoft was close to 10 billion, if not, if I'm not mistaken. They were worth more than that, and now they're somewhere around 1 billion, bro. <laughs> Damn! That, that's a disaster. Now listen, 1 billion is a lot of money. Can a brother get two pennies, though? Can a brother get two pennies? <laughs> but, but man, like, we're talking about a video game company, Ubisoft. And this was a beloved company, man. And I love their games, bro. Assassin's Creed was one hell of a franchise for the longest amount of time. And after all of this bull squash, what did they gain? Nothing. Fans turned on them. People not buying their games. Their games are bombing like crazy. Uh, Star Wars recently came out, not doing too good, right? And ultimately, th now they're like, hey, we might have to sell the company to survive. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and we're also getting reports that 30 to 40%, roughly, according to Tom Henderson, it doesn't mean that this is going to be 100% factual, but it's believable. It's being reported that 30 to 40% of their uh, the, the, the devs are going to get fired. Oh. Tough love. Yes. Why you guys do this? Create more job opportunities instead of that. Yeah, if this game succeeded, if this game was good, it would have then succeeded. Therefore, it would have sold more. Fans would have been happy. Fans would have been eager to wait for their next game. And guess what? They would also be working and thinking about making the next game and they would be like, yes, we need to hire that peop that pe that guy. We need to hire this person. We gotta hire that person. We gotta hire more people. Creates more jobs. Create Creates more jobs. Good for economy. Good for Ubisoft. Good for their investors as well because they're making money. Investors happy. They invest more and then they make more money. Everybody happy. Everybody profit. But like, nah, man. Th 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 this, I guess, yes, it's the gamers that are completely uh stupid right yeah gamers deserve to uh, there are a couple of words that i was thinking i'm just like actively uh filtering myself right now you probably can see that right there are words that i cannot say on youtube but decent titles as well square enix should be appreciated for being pulled out of the list the square enix thing is actually really interesting as we talked about a few months back there was this news being reported that during a q a an investor or investors were approaching Square with concerns about their association to SBI, which we could see an example of in this tweet, where the question was presented, I'm personally happy about the shift from quantity to quality. I hope good titles will come out in the future. I'm concerned I about hope. the Canadian consulting company, Sweet Baby. Square Enix is- Oh man, first of all, I apologize on their behalf, brother. I'm like, I'm in Canada, man. I apologize on, uh, <laughs> I apologize on Sweet Baby. Canada's good, man. I love Canada, man. I love Canada. Don't you dare say anything bad about Canada, man. You know what I'm You know what I'm You know what I'm saying? Nah, don't dare, but nah, bro. Like, bro, like this is, this is just pathetic, bro. This is pathetic, man. Like, uh, we apologize. Like, where are my Canadian brothers at, though? Let's, together, okay? We, together. We all Bruh. apologize on their behalf, all right? We apologize because these suckers never gonna apologize. I'm passionate about this, guys. I'm passionate about this, man. These suckers are destroying my childhood memories. These suckers are destroying my hobby, man. These suckers are... Man, gaming was something that was so good, man. It still got some good stuff in it, man. Especially, like, the older games. I, I return back to the older games and I enjoy them. But, like, these things are destroying a lot of people's hobbies, man. Like, damn, man. I'm passionate about it, bro. I'm sorry. I'm passionate about this, bro. Solicited as a client. But is there actually a transaction there? What kind of transaction is it? And so Kiryu actually responded to that. To my recollection, he used to be a director over at Square, and now he's the current president. So he says, I would like to refrain from making specific comments about individual clients. As we shift from quantity to quality, providing content that is enjoyable and safe for our customers is also part of what makes a product fun. We will do our best as creators. So we kind of dodged the question there. However, yeah, yeah. a week or two ago, we also talked about this news that, yeah, over on Sweet Baby Inc.'s website, they, they no longer it? have Square listed as a client. Now Yo! that's- Yo! They removed themselves! They're like, yeah, deuces, pieces. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys heard this news or not, but Toyota is also pulling out, right? So W Toyota, W Toyota, modern audience ain't buying no Toyotas, right? 
until <laughs> yeah you must have heard that like that post went viral on facebook i was seeing that in my recommended on twitter as well went viral some of you guys added me in the situation as well and real quick before i show you guys like this video i want to say if you guys are into conspiracies and you know thriller type content something that you want to watch at, at night Check out my uh, second channel, man. Scary X. This is my second channel. We've been growing steadily there as well. Uploading mostly every day or every other day, but mostly every day on there as well. Check it out and I'll see you as there as well. Alright, let's get back to the content here, boo-boo. Uh, shout out to Smash JT, roll it. Why do people that work in the games industry hate gamers so much? You I would, would never think understand. that I'm living in some sort of parody world. That there's no way that you could work in an industry and hate your customers yeah. as much as you do. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. Today's video is going to be focusing on Jacob Geller, a very popular million plus subscriber YouTube channel that apparently also works for a consultancy company no. called Hit Detection. And it's a company I've talked about previously. They're basically the same exact thing as Sweet Baby Inc, Black Girl Gamers. These places are a dime a dozen. They're pop-up shops overnight, trying to make as much money as possible from these game companies, hoping to avoid being canceled by signing on some sort of consultancy group to check all these boxes and say, hey, if anyone comes after you, just tell them that we went through it and everything's okay and don't worry because we approved it. Which is bad enough on the surface, but when you have someone that I've looked through quite a bit of their tweets because it's been fascinating to do a deep dive on someone that just has such hatred for real gamers. People that have a passion. Uh, toxic gamers, toxic gamers. Yes, man, gamer. Who does this? These suckers are hell insane, man. Who does this to their customer base, bro? Customer, yeah, I get it. Sometimes the customer is wrong, okay? Sometimes the customer is, uh, yeah, it happens. But who does that? Who does that? Who does that? <laughs> man, these things are crazy. Holy crap, man. Holy crap. They always are like gamers toxic, gamers this and that. And I get it. Sometimes some gamers are. It happens. You know? It happens. Because you suckers are dropping trash games after trash games, right? Garbage products. Filled with microtransactions. The store works, but the game don't. <laughs> Needs a day one patch. How many times you heard that? The day one, the day one patch will fix it. The day one patch. And there are gamers defending games. Don't lie to me, guys. Like, some of you also defended some games that you knew deep down were not ready for launch, but you're like, nah, bro. Day one patch will fix it. You did that, right? The point is, gamers defend them even when they are in the wrong. Gamers are ready to defend them. But nah, man, it's like gamer's fault. Yes, like release an unfinished product filled with bugs, glitches, trash ass games, games that belong in the garbage, clearly, uh, filled with microtransactions, DEI, woke politics, agendas driven, agendas pushed uh, down people's throat. Yes, yes, buy those. Oh, if you don't wanna buy, oh, you're not gonna buy? Then you're toxic. Gamers are the problem. Yes, it's your fault that the game fa failed. It's your fault that we're going bankrupt. It's your fault that our company is shutting down. Yeah, it's you. It's your fault. It's never my fault. It's your fault, right? No accountability here. For the games they play. Someone that you would think also does, but clearly based off their tweets, is anything but. <laughs> Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down not just the situation behind hit detection, but also Jacob Geller and these ridiculous tweets. Jacob first showed up on my radar when he announced on Twitter, surprise, I'm consulting on the Silent Hill 2 remake. I had a really great experience working with the team. Because of this, I won't... Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, yeah. uh, and Silent Hill 2, Konami, they kind of like... He style, right? <laughs> Shout out to Konami, W Konami, Bumbleclad Brothers. We'll be talking about the game publicly. Have fun figuring out your own takes, which is a very backhanded, narcissistic view of the community when you're just like, you know, you know the, the, the feeling and the sentiment with honest, real gamers out there and how we feel about these consultancy companies and how they're basically creating Gamergate 2 themselves. Actually, you could say Sweet Baby Inc. and Chris Kindred did create Gamergate 2 and the way you're talking so backhandedly about it, so flippantly, like it's not a big deal and it's cool and anyone that's against you, they're the problems because they don't understand that consultancy groups are somehow good for gaming. On the surface, bad enough, but his past posts have raised even more eyebrows for his disdain uh -oh. towards the very community uh -oh. that he is now working with. This is 
is a very large YouTube creator with over 1 million subscribers. And checking through his Twitter, he comes across as just a very woke, narcissistic, I'm better than you talking down to everyone type attitude. And it always makes me wonder how people like this even get attention in the first place. So I watch some of his videos and I'm like, ah, he's a video essay guy. All right. I mean, they're decent, not terrible quality. They're okay. And he mm -hmm. keeps his wokeness away from the videos and he just talks about the games that's themselves good. and that's his good. passion that's for good. them, that's good. That's good. which is wild. Because yeah, that, that's good, right? But but he brings his wokeness to these gaming devs and he pushes that in the video games. <laughs> that's where he pushes that, right? Crazy, man. Come on, man. Damn, man. I'm like, okay, so he is a gamer and he does have a passion for these Fantastic games, apparently. Gamer. Why does he hate gamers so much? In 2019, Geller responded to a post from Compulsion Games writer Bijan Stefan, who was asking for the dumbest idea that would still make the world better. Geller replied in a quote tweet bluntly stating, <laughs> no gamers. <laughs> so apparently this guy- No, 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 listen. It could, be, it could be he was sarcastic. And you know, sometimes, yeah, people will tweet all kind of stuff. So to kind of like blame him or what I mean by that is uh, put that tweet under a microscope. I think that's wrong. But um, I, I believe like Smash JT is gonna have a good point in it uh, because like he already showed like he is part of that consultancy and he is, was part of like pushing agendas down just like Sweet Baby Ink was. So yeah, I guess uh, people are gonna go back and dig up his past and people when people are gonna find tweets like that, they're gonna link with it, uh, link with his consult consultancy and his recent work and it makes sense, totally makes sense. That's fair, that's fair, right? But just like looking at those tweets, uh, could be sarca sarcasm too, right? Like it happens. Yeah, gamers talks and gamers this and that, right? But um, I guess uh, he meant that literally, based off of what's going on right now. So guy that is a passionate gamer, according to his million plus YouTube channel, mm. doesn't want there to be any gamers out there. And you can look as far into that tweet as you want. I wouldn't say he's trying to eradicate people that like games. Yeah, but it does strike me as a bit odd that this person has such a strong stance against people that are passionate about the hobby that he's built his supposed legacy on top of. The dismissal of the gaming community has upset a lot of fans. Scrolling through social media and just seeing the responses, many people are looking at this as a reason to boycott the very well-reviewed Silent Hill 2 remake, and I. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, hey, hey. Okay, now I'm kind of confused though. Uh, Konami pulled out, right? Uh, Konami pulled out, right? Hit detection. Okay, is his name? Uh, is this? Is his company called Hit Detection LLC or what? Said on the FF7 remake, Hit Detection was listed in the credits. Hit Detection being a different consultation firm. Considering how Square was working with Sweet Baby Inc though, it's still very amusing that they decided they don't want to be associated with that consultation firm anymore. The article Ooh, okay. ends with this. So they pieced out, but they initially worked with them, okay. This. One of Sweet Baby's employees even admitted that the company's goal is to burn the industry to the ground, indicating a massive threat to the gaming industry. Nonetheless, this trend needs to stop. Otherwise, we'll see a lot more big budget games fail poorly. One of Sweet Baby's employee even admitted that the company's goal is to burn the industry to the ground, indicating a massive threat to the gaming <laughs> Massive threat to the gaming industry. Yikes. They openly say that and gaming companies hire hire them. Instead of and, and you know what? Like if you're you're if you're a gamer that expresses your opinion and you're a passionate fan and you're like, hey, I don't like this, I don't like that, all of a sudden you're toxic, block, banned. Hey, we're done. We don't want to work with you. We don't want to listen to it. You, you know, and you're a passionate fan. You want the game. You want the company doing better. Nah, you're not. You're never going to get the chance. They're, they're going to block you. They're going to ban you. But companies like that, that are openly saying their goal is to uh, destroy. Well, yeah, come work with us. Come work with, we, we will pay you to destroy us. Yeah, absolutely. This, this is different kind of stupid, man. Like, I swear I to God. I say it's man. very well reviewed, but that's because of the critics who are all in the same group together. They're all going to the club together. They all get access together and they all pat each other's backs together. And this is one of those games that, I'll be honest, it does look pretty good. And that gives them every right to give it a high score because they wanted that so badly. That of course, they're going to give it a very high score to perpetuate the narrative that <laughs> you can have a consultancy group and have a great game come out of it. Look, <laughs> we know these people and we're giving it a great score. So that's how you know it's a great game. No problems here. Remember when Ubisoft put out their Assassin's Creed apology lasting four pages, apologizing to the gamers and how they basically run Japanese yeah. history and feudal oh Japan God, through the mud? Yeah. Joshua oh Rivera no. on Twitter said, embarrassing the e Salute to Captain BBC! <laughs> Gotta salute him, man. Gotta salute him. Damn, you have homie. to do this. Even by gamer standards, the culture war over this game is brain dead. Which is like, 
Wow, how could you be so flippant about what Ubisoft is doing? Maybe you have buddies at Ubisoft or you feel like what they're doing and the propaganda that they're pushing with it is justified, but taking a step back and looking at how Ubisoft handled Assassin's Creed Shadows, yeah, of course they're going to delay it. Of course the game needs a lot of work. Yeah, and of course they needs. should probably be reinserting- oh, It should be delayed for a decade, bro. That's how much uh, how much work it needs, bro. A white Japanese protagonist into the game because that's what it was supposed to be before George Floyd happened. Big Bella responded, yeah, this sucks. Gives those lunatics way more fuel for their fire. Like this is one of those people that just doesn't want us to win. It's almost like a Breath. them against us, the industry against the Breath. gamers. He is causing the divide to go even further. Instead of saying, yeah, Ubisoft really screwed the pooch on this. I don't agree with that. He's saying, yeah, no, gamers are the problem. And, and this is frustrating that Ubisoft is giving into them here. And many of you may not be familiar with the original Gamergate, but much of it started from the backroom deals that were started with game reviewers and people that were working in the industry, trading good reviews for money or favors, or something along the lines, getting trips, wine and dine, whatever you call it. There were a lot of backroom deals in the industry that gamers were bringing to the forefront and being very frustrated about. And then you think, oh, that was what Gamergate was all about, even though people tried to change the narrative about what it was. Now we fast forward to now, Gamergate 2, as some are calling it. Most would say Gamergate never even ended in the first place, where we have someone like Nick Galandra being exposed from Frost Riviera saying, no, this guy was taking all these favors in exchange for giving good reviews or bumping scores up for games. Like, literally, was just happening. Proof right there. Saying they forced him into a meeting to assert ownership under false pretenses and that he offered them jobs when he sold the brand, and they turned him down. If you run that, then I will do what I need to do. Um, well, sure. See, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. You would think that's a big breaking story. And it was. A lot of people talked about it. What does Jacob have to say about this? I still occasionally have people tell me that game critics are paid by publishers for good reviews. And it's just like, do you know how huge you'd be to break that story? To be the site that reveals the cash payouts everyone is taking and no one has spilled the beans? Um, Holy. Actually, there's, there's a lot of people spilling the beans. There's a lot of people talking about it. This is getting exposed out there everywhere. Yeah. And it's just kind of like... Yeah, everyone expected that to be the case. I, I'm playing, yeah, 10 years from now, if, 10 years from now, if not, yeah, if nothing gets changed, then holy crap, right? Like, what are we doing? But I believe that it's gonna change, it's gonna, it's gonna get better before it gets, uh, it's gonna get better, but it's gonna get worse, though. I, I think we're kind of, like, peaking in terms of games being worse, filled with woke ideologies, uh, po politics, and crap like that but but still it's it still needs to get a little bit more worse before it gets better right for example just like yesterday right guys like master chief mrs mrs chief right <laughs> they're doing that they're not learning man they're not learning lara croft lorenzo what are we talking about destroying franchises after franchises so it's gonna get worse there's still room for more franchises getting destroyed okay so they're gonna destroy a lot more franchises and slowly but surely we're gonna start to see people and these companies shift we're already seeing like Toyota said no to all this this the politics the woke crap right konami i guess uh, one of the first few video game companies that said no concord but was a disaster now here's the thing though halo is a beloved game okay it's uh, it's big it's huge it's Xbox. It is Xbox. So we need the Xbox gamers. Just like how the PlayStation gamers said no to Concord, we need the Xbox gamers saying no to that crap too. Right? Although, like, uh, the gameplay that they revealed, it's in Unreal Engine 5. So far, it does look good. But uh, yeah, right? But but here's the thing. This is not still not an apples to apples comparison because Concord, yes, albeit that's a PlayStation title, but it's not like a big title it's a new ip that they tried to put out and it bombed it failed because gamers said no and it was trash and then on top you have the <laughs> they, they added the the woke stuff in it too right they wokeified it so you know what gamers said absolutely no to that bull squash it should have been free to play but they ch were charging 40 dollars so of course it it flopped big time for halo halo is a franchise it's a big franchise in terms of Assassin's Creed and Star Wars, where Heron pre-orders are low and Star Wars Outlaws ultimately failed too. So that's a massive win for gamers because wh why Star Wars is known. Star Wars is big. It, it, yeah, it generates millions, if not billions, right? So the fact that Star Wars failed, at least like in terms of the game by Ubisoft, that's insane. That's a, that's a solid signal. That is a solid signal. So things gonna change. But we need to keep voicing with our wallets, because uh, there's a lot, and sadly, man, there's a lot of room uh, for more franchises getting ruined and destroyed by these uh, activists and by these gaming companies right now, man.
it's, there's still it's not movement. really breaking the news like everyone thought it would because it's kind of like an understood thing. Unfortunately, it's been happening forever. Or diving back into 2013 when he said maybe there'd be more girl gamers if guy gamers didn't act so incredibly unlikable. No, that's not why girl gamers don't game. Like, my wife enjoys Dr. Mario and puzzle games and she'll play Candy Crush till the cows come home. That's what girl gamers do. They like to play mobile phone games for the vast majority. Sure, you'll get your Vara Darks out there that will play Dark Souls and all these other big time games, but the average girl gamer out there does not care about that experience. It's just not in their DNA, and that's perfectly fine. As much as these game companies try to inject that into them, yeah. it's just not meant to be, and that's okay. The that, game That is okay, man. We're designed differently. We got different motivations. We got different tastes, and that is perfectly fine, man. Damn, man, Candy Crush, right? Candy Crush is waiting for you. But now, nah, like, listen, I'm pretty sure a lot of females, a lot of females love Lara Croft, right? Yeah. And they couldn't handle that. Men love it. Females love it. This is one of those franchises that I feel like that most, uh, most, uh, I mean, both sides love, right? They, they, they could not see that. They couldn't see that. That's why they're ruining it. That's why they're ruining it for everybody. Uh, and, and yes, like there are, uh, for example, Call of Duty, predominantly uh, played by males, uh, guys. Females play that too, and it's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. But does that mean that you change Call of Duty to cater to females? Nah. The, the, the females that are gonna play, they're gonna play it regardless. There's a reason why they're playing it. Uh, and even if you change, it's not like you're gonna see like a crazy bump. What you're gonna see is guys not playing it. They're gonna pull out. So just make the games for gamers and make the games for your target audience. Simple as that, simple as that. Games are there for whoever wants to play them. And of course we have him replying to of all exactly, outlets, yeah. Kotaku, where Kotaku posted, NPR is very worried that gaming is going to turn kids into Nazis. Oh, and Jacob okay. replied, well, yeah, I totally there, understand we're... the defensive response to our medium, but it's not at all inaccurate to say that the far right Okay, I thought he was gonna be defending gamers for the first time. Like, I was really anticipating that, but it's not at all accurate. He said inaccurate. Groups are trying to recruit gamers. Much of today's alt-right grew out of Gamergate with asterisks. Okay, why are you, like, censoring Gamergate? <laughs> What is going on? Oh my god. And it's sympathizers and organizers like Bannon and Milo preyed on those groups. Like, to think that because of the original Gamergate is why there are alt-right gamers out there is ridiculous enough in the first place. But this is a way of like just throwing a blanket over a situation yeah. and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, the people I disagree with, they're alt-right Nazis. Mm. And it goes on and on and on. His Twitter mm. feed is actually fairly interesting just going through it and seeing his takes and yeah, just yeah, how yeah. ridiculous they really are. But this is one of those people that just strikes me as a Kotaku urinalist, you know, one of those people that just has their worldview. And if people don't agree with them, everyone else needs to be ended because yeah. they're the worst people in the world. Instead of trying to have a conversation. Guys, whatever you do, do not watch this video. I cannot stress it. Don't watch this video. Insane drama. They turned. You want to see the new design of Lara Croft? Don't. Whatever you do, don't watch this video. Check out the video on the left, man. You're gonna thank me later.